Hey campers, this is NPS Ranger News. Our program features the amazing work of National Park Service Rangers, protecting people and parks across the country through law enforcement, search and rescue, emergency medicine, firefighting, and other emergency services. I'm Greg Jackson, your host. NPS Ranger News updates news stories every day as they happen, both on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, find us at backslash NPS Ranger News. On Twitter, we're at NPS underscore Ranger. Today we're going to talk about how to be a law enforcement park ranger with the National Park Service. To be a permanent law enforcement ranger with the Park Service, well, about 90% of permanent rangers start off as seasonal rangers. So to be a seasonal law enforcement ranger with the National Park Service, one has to complete a course at one of the seasonal law enforcement training academies. And you do this uh, not as an employee, but on your own. If you Google seasonal law enforcement training academy, National Park Service, you'll find a webpage that lists the academies. And uh, today we have the uh, director of one of the uh, academies, C.J. Ross. He's the director of the Seasonal Ranger Academy at Vermilion Community College in Ely, Minnesota. C.J.'s background includes an associate's degree in police science, military police background. He worked with the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, as chief ranger in Reno, worked for the BLM also at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center and spent a number of of years at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. He worked for the Fish and Wildlife Service at at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in charge of basic training for all the refuge officers. He also worked for FLETA, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Accreditation, the agency in charge of uh, standards for federal law enforcement training, uh, making sure that uh, training programs are uh, doing what they're, uh, what they say they're going to do. Um, so now he is the, again, the uh, academy director at the, of the seasonal law enforcement program at Vermilion Community College. Uh, Vermilion is one of the older programs in the, in the system. I think the uh, first program started over 40 years ago, I believe, at Santa Rosa, uh, I think it was Santa Rosa Junior College then, maybe Santa Rosa Community College now. There are a few others, and, but uh, as far as the seven that are in the in the system now, uh, Vermilion is uh, one of the longest, longest around, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's an old program um, started by a retired FBI agent who lived in Ely, and um, they've been doing it for quite a while. Yeah, it doesn't have quite the uh, the number of students growing through as uh, some of the, the top two or top three, but it's been around a long time, and it's in a uh, a, a, a nice location for uh, for land management. And up in up in Minnesota, there's actually public land and, and parks around the uh, the Midwest region and the National Park Service is uh, well represented at the school and, and many of the uh, the people that the students that go through end up with uh, with jobs or intend to have jobs in the Midwest region and that's your primary uh, primary number of, of students go through there is, is that right it is um, what I we we actually had an uh, open uh, visitation this weekend for upcoming high school juniors and so we had about 50 families came Greg and uh, what I explained to a couple of the folks is that if Outward Bound and the National Outdoor Leadership School got married and had a baby that would be Vermilion. <laughs> that's, that's very outdoor oriented uh, resource law enforcement outdoor leadership guides um, you name it Everybody here, you know, canoes, kayaks, rock climbs, mountain bikes, skis. It's just a big outdoor school. And like many of the uh, the uh, seasonal law enforcement training programs, Vermilion trains for other agencies as well and is involved with other uh, law enforcement uh, agencies. Is that true? It is. And we're unique out of the seven seasonal academies because... Um, you get certified as a National Park Service seasonal ranger, and you also get certified as a Minnesota post officer. Right off the bat, that's great. Yeah, so you get both the, the federal opportunity and then the state and local opportunity. With that background, what um, what percentage of your graduates who goes who goes where in general? Who goes state? Who goes federal? 
it's actually kind of a 50 50 mix um i'm big into helping you know the students get jobs upon graduation and so i'm working with our december 13th graduate group right now about half uh are starting to get seasonal jobs for this summer the other half are going with minnesota county or city jobs terrific terrific and how long is the program it's 17 weeks do you have a, a website that people can uh, people can go to for more we information? Do. We, we do. If you go to a vcc.edu or just Google search Vermilion Community College, uh, the law enforcement group, we have uh, two associate's degrees, one in resource law enforcement and one in straight law enforcement. And then we have additional information on what they call the SPLIRT Seasonal Park Ranger Law Enforcement Academy Program. Okay, so uh, you don't have to, one doesn't have to, as a student, go there for the whole degree. One can go there just for the program, or one exactly. can use the, one can also use the program as part of their degree. Yeah, the, the group that graduated December 13th, I'd say three quarters had done the associates here. The other quarter, um, we had a Native American woman from North Dakota who already had a bachelor's. We had an Army captain, same thing, and they came into the SPLIRT program with their BA. Awesome. Awesome. That's a, that's a good start is um, with the degree. Not everyone that goes through the program passes the program. It's a law enforcement academy. Um, Correct. What does a person need to do to uh, prepare themselves? The biggest thing, so the group of 32 that we had uh, graduated in December, five of them did not get the Park Service designation. One was due to academics. The other four were the physical efficiency battery. Uh, we gave the students three hours a week on the clock to work out. I worked out with them. Uh, they needed to do some additional workouts on their own, and the four, uh, they just didn't put in their time. Okay, well, sounds like uh, it's one needs to uh, be somewhat close to being able to pass uh, to uh, you can't turn around the uh, person who's never worked out uh, just during a, a, a 17 week program. Agreed. And the other thing, Greg, the four candidates who failed were all male. The women were, were dynamite. They were squared away. Uh, the four gentlemen could not lift the bench press, could not lift, you know, a percentage of their body weight. Okay. Um, let's go over the, the, the PEB, the physical efficiency battery. It's a, it's a battery of tests, and uh, it's also available online. One can see um, what those tests are, and also one can see how they're administered. There's probably some videos even on YouTube, I would imagine. Yes. And uh, there's got to be some scoring as as well. But uh, generally, my experience, uh, and and I'm sure with yours, the upper body strength, um, it's a it's a it's a related to um, body mass. So if or body weight, if someone you have to uh, bench press a percentage of of your body weight, correct. And if someone starts off with a, an excess of body weight, uh, mm -hmm. they have to push a whole lot more. Um, yes, sir. And in my case, uh, many, many years ago, I started off with uh, a very low body weight, um, and I just needed to build up muscle. And, and for me, it was easier to, <laughs> I couldn't lose any more weight without uh, becoming transparent. Um, I, I built up muscle and was able to do it. So uh, one is faced with a, a choice uh, to build muscle or, or shed pounds. And, and uh, if one has a whole lot of pounds to shed, <laughs> it's probably a good thing to start before, uh, before applying. Exactly. Well, and, and um, so say for a male, a 24, uh, 24 or older, they're going to have to lift 89% of their body weight. Okay, so do the math. It's, it's, uh, it is age and uh, gender adjusted. The, the charts are available online. If, if you have any questions on applying, uh, you know, contact, the, uh, contact the school. 
it's difficult to go through a whole long program and get to the end and not pass. Uh, Agreed. So I'm what I I think you know you don't want people to go through it at the end and, and not make it. So I think what is what I'm getting at is in strongly encouraging people. Um, this thing happened in the National Park Service too, and other federal agencies. People yeah. go through, and in every academy, and get near the end, and and it's tragic to see them put in all that effort when uh, they could have they could have entered entered being able to pass to at the beginning and not had to sweat it. Yeah, and it's really not that hard, Greg. That as a 56 year old man, uh, for me to pass that physical fitness test, I have to lift 118 pounds. Okay, well. That might <laughs> shoveling snow is good training. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> every day. Um, there, besides the the physical requirements, there there's academic requirements. Um, I don't want to get into yeah. everything that the National Park Service requires to uh, to uh, become a National Park Service Ranger. But a lot of the standards uh, to get into uh, your academy mirror those of uh, what it takes to uh, be a National Park Service Ranger. What are those standards? Well, the academics I can hit on first because we did have one gentleman fail. You're allowed to miss one test. You have to remediate, retest it. Uh, from there on in, you, can, you cannot fail any of the tests. And essentially, there are seven exams throughout the program. And um, within the program, too, there are tests for firearms. Um, there's tests for physical skills in defensive tactics, handcuffing people. Um, yes protecting yourself and being able to arrest bad guys, things like that. To, uh, to get in the front door, to apply to um, Vermilion Community College, the Seasonal Law Enforcement Training Program there, um, one has to be a high school graduate, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you can access that application, Greg, online at the college's website. Oh, perfect. So, um, you know, do not, <laughs> if you're a convicted felon, don't bother. We do a background check on all our students. Okay, um, because one will be handling firearms, and uh, then one wants to get a job as a National Park Service law enforcement officer. Um, you got to pass the background check there as well. So, any other any other words of advice or words of wisdom for people interested in uh, in applying? Get those applications in early. Um, start your physical fitness workout now and look forward to having a lot of fun. CJ, is there any other, uh, any other advantages specifically of that school that um, just distinguish it in your mind? There is, Greg. Um, the law enforcement program is the largest program at the college, so they bend over backwards. And if I can give you an example, we have our own classroom building. It's called the Outdoor Learning Center. Uh, it's actually three miles away from the campus, it was an old fishing camp that the Forest Service leases to the college. So the law enforcement students actually live in the little cabins around the lake. And central is this large classroom facility, and that's where we run all the law enforcement classes. And so law enforcement virtually has their own facility and own classroom. I've been there, and it's beautiful. It's, it's If you are looking for a ranger experience, it's little cabins next to a lake in northern Minnesota, and trees abound, and uh, it's 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 um, an outdoors experience. Yeah, you can actually see wolves and moose at that facility, and then we're fortunate in that you know we've partnered with some of the local national parks, and so the rangers, some voyagers, and some of the other national parks actually come and support us as instructors. Terrific. Well, thanks, CJ. CJ Ross from Vermilion Community College. He's the uh, Seasonal Ranger Academy Director. Thanks so much, CJ. Thank you, Greg. Well, campers, that's all for now. Check back for new shows every few days. Breaking news comes out when it happens on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks for listening. And in case you haven't figured it out, NPS Ranger News isn't affiliated with the government. I'm Greg Jackson for NPS Ranger News. See you on the trail.